Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to another video this week. For this video, we're going to be doing a research assistant automation inspired by another YouTuber. His name is Savity. Except that instead of doing it in make.com, we're going to be doing it in active pieces. With this video, we also provided a template, which we are going to be using in this video, just to kind of demonstrate that we can do the same thing in active pieces. So I'm going to be showing you guys a step-by-step -step on how to automate and create this automation from scratch. Uh, a few things that we're going to be doing in this video, a couple of things actually. So we're, first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be compiling the actual prompt that we're going to be using for the research. Uh, we're going to be using Perplexity AI to do a summary and research since it can scour the web and can get the latest information and can browse the internet. So we're going to be using Perplexity AI. We're also going to be using AI table to store the data, the output from Perplexity so that if there happens to be a fault in the flow, we have a backup of the actual output. So it's saving us money and not have to redo the same research multiple times just because our automation failed. So that's what we're going to be doing. Specifically, we're going to be adding and creating multiple data sheet. The first data sheet is going to be for storing the ideas. So we're going to be using a scheduled base automation where we're going to be going to the AA table to retrieve those ideas. And the second data sheet is going to be used to store the summary and output. Actually, we're not going to be using Cloud AI, but if we choose to create or add another prompt and use the output that Perplexity AI generated, we can have another LLM summarize it and create a better output. Then we can use a, a second AI to actually add more details to that summary. For instance, if we are planning on posting it on LinkedIn and if we want to create a LinkedIn post based on that summary that Perplexity AI generated, or if we want to do a tweet and we want to cater that towards Twitter, then we can use something like Cloud AI. But we're not going to be using Cloud AI in this video. We're just going to the research route. And then from there, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. You can do a in under another step to create a summary based on LinkedIn posts, or you can create a summary based on a Twitter. So it just really depends on how you want to take this. So the output that we're going to be generating is instead of sending it to a social media, we're going to be sending ourselves an email. So we're going to take the perplexity AI output for the research, and we're going to be sending ourselves an email, just like Savity's video. So let's go ahead and examine what we're going to be doing today as far as automation. Oh, by the way, if you stick around till the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing you the board mix that I created, which includes a different prompt that I'm using for this video. I'm also sharing you the external links that I'm using, as well as the diagram of the flow for active pieces. And also I'm going to be sharing with you guys the template for Straco, which is a platform for uh, everything that has to do with LLMs, where you can create and work with multiple LLMs at the same time. So I'm going to be doing a demo for all those tools that I mentioned uh, in this video. And I'm also going to be doing a step-by-step -step on how to create the AI table data sheet. And also I'm going to be showing you guys how to create the active pieces flow from scratch. So a lot of people are complaining about me going fast through my tutorials. So this time I'm going to just take it slow and, and just kind of walk you through the process. All right. And lastly, I'm going, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the template for the active pieces automation. So you have that as a reference. So if you want to use this automation, so we're going to be doing all these things in this video. So on a high level for active pieces, we're going to be doing a scheduled trigger. We can do like a weekly trigger, but you can change this to however duration you want. You can have it sent to you on a weekly basis or a daily basis, depending on your preference. Like I mentioned before, we're going to be using a table to retrieve the actual topic or the idea that we want to research on. So we're going to be storing all that information in a table. So once we retrieve a list of records, we're going to be looping through those records and we're going to be doing some research using uh, perplexity. But once we got an output for, for perplexity, we're going to be storing that output and adding the output to the second data sheet. 
which is in a table. And once we have that output in place, then we're going to be sending an email of the output that we receive. So it's quite quick and simple. And obviously from here, you can create a new one such as, you know, use Claude AI to summarize, right? To summarize the perplexity result output right from here so you can kind of take it in different ways as you wish uh, but the most important piece here is being able to do our research in real time and compiling the prompt and feeding it into perplexity all right so let's go ahead and start with the automation and working with the prompt that savity created so here's the prompt that he created so i just want to kind of give you the thoughts here so the prompt is very specific to what we want. It also has some placeholders for things that we can substitute based on the things that we're researching for. So there's quite a bit of variables here that we need to pre-fill. So we can go about it in different ways. We can copy this and use some regex to replace some of these square brackets, or we can use AI to change it into something that will work best for us. So let's go back to the board first. So here I have a prompt here that I'm going to be using. I'm using voila to just copy this and then control Q. So whatever I selected here is going to be feed into the AI and I can pretty much add additional context of what I want to do with the selected text. So in this case, I want to identify all the variables in the document, give me a unique list of these fields. So, and then the variables are words within square brackets. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter on that. So as you can see here, it gave us all the different things that we need to fill out based on this prompt template, right? So now you have an idea of what we need to fill out. We can also run this second prompt, which we can use for building out our Straco template, which if you're not familiar with Straco, it's a basically a platform that allows you to work with multiple LLMs. So currently we do support, I think 20 LLMs, probably, probably more. So here's a list of all the LLMs that they currently support, ranging from Claude, Cohere, Dolphin, and they also have Mistral here, which is, I believe is open source, and then OpenAI, and they also have Gemini here. The cool thing about Straco is you can actually like, instead of having to move into different platforms, you can actually select multiple ones, right? Let's say I want to output in Haiku, I want an output in Gemini preview, and I want an output in, and let's say I want to use GPT-4 Turbo, which is the newest one. So I have all these different LLMs in place, and I can provide the same prompt to them and have the output given to me in real time for all of them. Let's say I'm working with sample prompt here. I'm copying this one, right? And I want to I want to create a research based on software engineering topics or AI. I can easily paste this here and send it to Straco. You can s switch between the, the different models uh, that you have selected and it'll give you the, the different output for the AI model, uh, which is kind of cool. All right, so you can see here, Claude 3 Haiku is being generated. Turbo, GPT-4 Turbo is done as well. And Gemini Pro and Perplexity is also done. So you can do a comparison of which AI model fits well for the given prompt. Okay. So that's the reason why I like this a lot. Going back to our prompt here. So I want to substitute all these uh, different variables so that I can use this over and over again for any topic that I, that I want. So we're going to be turning this into a template in a Straco. So the way to do this is the way it works in, in Straco. If you click on the top right, hand side. There's a bunch of templates that is provided uh, for free here by Straco, such as image prompting for programming. And then it has a, a specific model that's been set for you already. But if you want to build your own template, you can click on this plus uh, icon right here. And it will give you this side window right here where you can uh, specify the template name. So we're going to go ahead and specify the template such as per Let's say we're gonna, we're gonna give this perplexity research assistant, and then we're just gonna copy that assistant here. And then we, we can provide a default model. So in this case, we're gonna be using perplexity sonar eight online, and we're gonna be choosing next. So from here, you can provide some context, either you can provide an image or an attachment to this prompt, or you can provide some variables where every time you, you want to create 
a new prompt, you can just click on this template and you can input the variables that you've defined for this template. So in this case, let's say for the variables, I want to write a prompt here. For instance, let's just take some of these things right here. Let's say I want to take this first one over here and copy that. And let's go back to Straco. Let's say I paste this in. So you can see here that there's like a few variable fields that needs to be changed here. For instance, this one right here, generic industry or field. We can change this by changing this to the curly braces. So instead of the square brackets, we're going to be changing this to square braces. And that's going to automatically just provide you with a variable. So when you go and click next, it's going to be added to my screen. You can see here the prompt that was generated and it has the single variable here that I've defined for this template. If I want to hit save, now it's going to be saved down to my list of templates here. Every time I want to use this, I can just go create a new chat here and I'm just going to click on that template and I just need to pre-fill that variable that I've used for my template. For, for instance, I want to do a research on this industry or field. I want to put AI technology. So when, once I do an insert, it's going to go ahead and put the prompt here, the complete prompt along with the variable that I provided that's ready to go. And then with the, uh, the model on the top already pre-selected. So all I have to do is just click on enter. And obviously it's not a meaningful prompt that we provided, but that's kind of the general gist of how to use the, the, the template. So let's go back to the template here. So the second prompt that I've created in my board is to do this, right? So instead of actually doing a curly braces or double curly braces, which what is Traco is accepting, I'm just going to do a single brace here so that I can change the braces um, manually by myself. So if you feed this into the AI here or to Vala, we're going to be just pasting that prompt and using the same context that we have. After this is done, we can do a comparison here. So you can see here that it starts with explore the latest trends. I told it specifically to not alter the original text, but to substitute just the fields that I want to be substituted. So in our case, we changed the field into curly braces field. We changed the variables to a single word type of variables, something that we can use instead of words. So we're, we're changing into like a programmatic sense so that we can easily work with it in Straco. But obviously you can change it to any variable that you want. Once I have this available, I can go and copy this whole output and we can create a new template here again. And we can just do a assistant. I created multiple ones of this already. So I'm just going to name this assistant two and then up two. And then I'm going to be changing this to perplexity online. And then I can just paste the one that I copied, which includes everything. So you see here that everything has a single curly brace here. If I want to turn this into a variable, I just need to go to the beginning of the variable and that will change it to variable and that's going to be added here. You just have to like handle and do it uh, manually for each one. Just to save time, I created a template here already. So this is the uh, second from the bottom here. So you can see here all the different variables already in place. You can examine by going to full screen. You can see the same prompt that was here, right, on the Straco template and with all the different variables already in place. As you can see here, I can go ahead and close that out. So you can see all the different variables. So next time we want to use this, we can just go ahead and click on that, right? And just pre-fill all the information that we want. So quite a bit of lengthy information here, but once you're done, you can go ahead and continue and you'll have your prompt ready to go and you can just hit enter and whatever model you have selected, it's going to be pre-selected on the top. Another route that we can also take is go with the second approach, which we can do highlight the whole text. And then I provided a prompt here, which basically um, using AI technology and I'm just going to have AI prefill as much information as it could on its own without me having to worry about it. All I have to do is just fill out this one single term here, which is AI technology. In my case, it could be whatever topic that you want. So we're going to go back here. To voila, I'm just gonna go ahead and and paste that prompt. So if we want to use AI to just pre-fill everything for us, which is probably the quickest way possible, is we're gonna go ahead and take this 
prompt here, which is I'm specifying here to use the AI technology as the focus of the research. And I'm going to allow it to just pre-fill all those variables and take care of everything. All I have to do is just supply one variable here, which is using AI technology. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this whole thing again, and then I'm going to launch voila. And then, and then I'm just going to paste that prompt after a few seconds, you see here that the output it says right here, explore the latest trend, which is similar to the original prompt that provided, except that it refills some information such as AI technology with industries focus on global markets. And also here, the keywords to monitor, artificial intelligence, machine learning, automation. It also provided the country such as USA, China, and Germany, which obviously we can change all that information. So it added like AI technology where it's applicable, so all we need to do is just take this whole thing and use that as a prompt. So here I provided a example on how the output of this pre-filled prompt to pre-filled information. I already pasted it here below. So I'm, I'm going to put this along with the board mix uh, board. That's what we're going to be using uh, when we get to active pieces. So we can go ahead and test this out. We can go back to Straco here. I'm going to create a new chat window. I already have perplexity as my, my model already selected. So all I have to do is just paste that prompt that I have with pre-filled information based, based on AI technology. It's starting generating the actual result on the fly. So it's, it's quite a long summary here. So it kind of breaks down everything by trends. It has a sector specific insights. It goes to the different uh, sectors such as finance, retail, and then it has some ethical and uh, regulatory considerations, some ROI based on the prompt that was provided. So this is the output. So now we know the output, we can go ahead and proceed to the next step and generate the actual automation itself. But before we do that, we're creating our data sheets in AI table first. So let's go ahead and jump into AI table here. So under my folder, we're going to create a couple of data sheets here. We're going to be naming this to be research ideas. So I have a title already here. I think I'm just going to rename this to idea and this is going to be a single line text. So I'm going to be walking through the, the thought process on how I build these data sheets from scratch. The next thing that I want is the actual prompt. We can do this automation in two different ways, or you can take the idea and have the, all the generation and all the pre-filling information happened in active pieces, or we can have all the prompt here available so that all that prompting is done already ahead of time for us. But instead of having to do a prompt here, let's just keep this simple. And we're gonna be doing our prompting in active pieces. So all we have to do is just provide the idea. For instance, let's say I wanna do a research on a technology, right? Let's say I want to do a re research on real estate and that's going to be the, the two ideas. So I can just pretty much delete uh, these co uh, two columns right here, which I'm not going to be needing anymore. We can have the ideas here and the automation is going to be generating those prompts for us. And it's going to be fed into perplexity or Straco, which we're going to be using our perplexity behind the scenes. As far as the uh, second data sheet, I'm going to be doing the plus symbol. And we're just going to be naming this to research results. And that's going to be the, the name of the research. I'm going to delete this records here that were added. So instead of the title, we're going to be changing this to date. And then we're just going to just keep it year and month. And we're going to be adding the time zone here. Adding the time zone, we're just going to add this date when this record gets created. So that's what it's going to be for this one. This field has to be unique and I don't want to put the summary as the first column here. So we're just going to put like a date added field as the first column here and we're going to hit OK. And then the second column is going to be the summary. And then this is going to be a long text. And then on the third column, we're going to be we're just going to put the actual idea. So which idea it originated from. So we're going to be doing a song, single line text. I'm not going to do a relationship between those two just to kind of keep it simple. So I'm going to rename this to idea. So this is going to be either AI or real estate or whatever idea that we have. 
So now that we have two data sheets, so the first thing is where we're going to be storing the idea. And then the second is where we're going to be putting the summary and the output of the perplexity result. And then from here, you can add publish or you can add some other columns here, depending on what you want to do with the result. But we're going to keep it simple. So those are the two data sheet that we've created that we need for our automation for now. So let's switch to active pieces here. We're going to create a new flow. We're going to start from scratch. So let's go back again to a board mix here and reference it. So here we're looking into doing a, a schedule based trigger. So let's go ahead and go back to active pieces. So I'm going to be searching for a schedule. So the trigger could be anything that we want. So in my case, I'm probably going to be doing a weekly. I don't really need to get the latest update every day. I'm just going to do probably like 7 a.m. in the morning. And I'm going to make this Los Angeles as that's my time zone. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a test on that one. So the next part of this is going to be finding a records in a table. So we're going to go ahead and add a step here and we're going to be adding AI table. So I don't need to do a search. It's already down here. So I'm going to pick find records in a table. I'm going to pick the connection and then from here, my space and then the data sheet. So as you can remember, I did name it to research. So I can do a search here. I did the ideas first where we're going to be grabbing the information. So I'm going to re rename this to get research ideas. So let's go ahead and just grab all of it. So as you can see here, I'm getting two records, one for AI technology and one for real estate. So now we have to create our prompt so that we can substitute and build out the first part of the prompting, which is to pre-fill the information that we receive based on the template here. So we're going to feed it the original template and we're going to be substituting the placeholder over here based on our information that we provide. So we're going to be using AI for that. We're going to be using Straco here, which has been added to Activesis. We're going to be doing an Ask AI here. I'm going to be using my connection. As far as pre-filling that information, I can use Claude Haiku. So I'm just going to go back and, and reference, just kind of, kind of look at what I have here. So pre-fill. So I think we're just going to copy and take all these information right here, and we're just going to feed it straight into this prompt. So we're going to make this wider. I'm just going to go ahead and use the text as a context. Use the text below as a context. So we're just going to paste all that information down here. I'm just going to do a square brackets equals to text. And then I'm going to use that same prompt that we did. So use the text below as a context. In the document text provided below, there's multiple variables that will need to be filled in using the Okay, this is where we're going to be supplying the thing that we get back from AI table. Before we do this, we're going to have to add a, a loop here so we can iterate through the, the different ideas. So we, we're going to loop through it. So I'm going to feed it the data that came back from AI table. So I'm going to go and drill down to data records and see here you can have an array or list of records. You can see here record zero and one. We're just going to pick the records here, which is going to give us the actual list. So once we test this, you can see the idea here. So now I can drag this into inside my loop and I can pass this along when we build our Straco to build our prompt. Okay, here we're going to be pre-filling that information. So inside the loop, we're going to be passing in the fields and the idea. So using the text below as a context in the document text provided, there's multiple variables that will need to be filled in using blah, 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 which is like the AI or real estate. As a focus of research, pre-fill the variables to the best of your abilities using this topic. I want the text, the exact same document text with only the variables change and the variables are within the square brackets. So I actually have never ran this inside the context of active pieces. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. All right. So let's go ahead and do a expand on this one and see what we get. Explore the latest trend, innovation, and challenges within the AI technology with a specific focus on global markets. Extend this to cover such as healthcare, finance, blah, blah, blah. And then it has AI right here, specific focus. And most of it is has to do with AI related. So I think I did 
pretty well as far as creating the prompt using the Haiku uh, Cloud 3 model. So let's go ahead and rename this to create prompt for the research. That's good and done. Actually, I wasn't <laughs> sure if that's going to work or not, but I'm glad that it did. So the, the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to feed that into a secondary call to perplexity. So we're going to be using Straco again, API. And then this time we're going to be using a different model. Instead of Claude 3, we're going to be using perplexity, which is on the way onto the bottom. We're going to feed that the prompt or the output prompt that we received from the previous step, right? Step four. And we're just going to paste it here. That's going to be our prompt. All right, we're just going to go ahead and do hit a test step after quite some time. You can see here the result that we got, which outputs based on the prompt that we provided. I believe the prompt told it to give it in Markdown. I modified it a little bit to give us the output in Markdown so we can easily manipulate it. So it gives us a clean output here as opposed to HTML. But since we're sending it as an email, we're going to convert this text into HTML. So it's it's nicer to look at when you're reading it from your, ne for your email account. Let's go ahead and bring down the text helper here. And then we're gonna be converting the markdown to HTML. And then we're gonna be supplying it with the Art Ask AI. I'm actually gonna be renaming this to research, research topic. And that's gonna be the name of the actual, that step. And that's what we're gonna be using as the markdown content here. We're just going to just put the result that we received from step five onto this one. And we don't need to change the flavor of markdown. We're just going to go ahead and do a test step here. So we can see, you see here that it converted the markdown text format into the HTML. And the last step that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be sending an email. So I'm going to be grabbing the Gmail here because that's what I use. And then for the connection, I'm going to be uh, using my connection. And then I'm just going to put my email here. And then from here, I'm going to be supplying a topic, which I'm going to make dynamic based on the idea that we have. So let's say I want to do a, a research topic, research on, and then we're going to be supplying it with the, the item inside that loop. We're going to be going to the field and then we're going to be specifying the idea here. And then our body type is going to be HTML. And then we're going to be passing in the, the HTML that was generated from step six. And that's it. We're going to do it and test this. All right. So it's been sent successfully. Let's go ahead and go to my email. When, when I go to my email, I, I get the topic research on AI technology or whatever topic that I want. It has the nicely formatted text. I mean, obviously it can, it can improve. We can clean this up a little bit more, but you can see here a breakdown, all the things that we want to do a research on it also have a reference at the bottom as far as its sources one thing i want to turn on for my automation is i want to do in case of a failure i want to do a auto retry i want to turn that on for each of these as it potentially could do a timeout unexpectedly same thing with the looking up for the AI table and as far as email i also want to do a auto retry on failure if something happens there so I think those are good. Let's go back into my board mix here. One thing that I also want to add, which I forgot, was to add the output to AI table here, which I missed before the email happens. Actually, I can do it after sending an email. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to add a step here. I'm just going to include AI table here once again. And then from here, I'm actually going to create a record using the API table connection and using the same space. And this time it's going to be research results. So I'm going to be pre-filling the information using the topic results that we receive. So we're going to be clicking on step five, which is the research topic. And I'm just going to click on that re uh, result. And the idea is going to be from this loop item. So we're going to go ahead and grab the loop on item, the item here, and that's going to drill down to the fields. And I'm just going to just put the idea right there. And then from here, I'm just going to leave the status, which we don't really need. The date added is automatically being set. And then we'll just go ahead and auto retry and filter as well. Once it's done, we got a 200 code here. That means it successfully created the record or it was able to respond and do a success. 
So let's go back and go to AI table here and go look at the results. So you can see here, I have the summary in place as well as the idea I in place, everything that we receive on an email, but it's in a markdown format. So that wraps it up for this video. I'm just going to create a template for this automation that I created here. So you can inspect it or if you want to use it for your own projects, feel free to use it. I'm also going to be sharing with you guys the board mix so that you can have access to all the different links that I have here, including the diagram and different prompt and the nice diagram on the right hand side. So if you like this kind of video, please go ahead and hit subscribe and hit like on this video and I'll see you guys on the next video.